Since the announcement of Apple Silicon, I've been wondering about whether these M1 machines would be a good platform for web development work. And I've had quite a few comments from viewers wondering the exact same thing. So let's find out. This video is sponsored by WinX DVD Ripper Platinum, the all-in-one DVD ripper which allows you to quickly convert DVDs into common video formats for any device. And for a very limited period, WinX DVD is being offered as a free giveaway. You'll find versions for Windows and Mac, and it supports old and new DVDs regardless of the region. You can even edit the DVD in a few clicks with crop, cut and merge tools. You can adjust parameters and add subtitles, and it's fast. Back up an entire DVD in as little as five minutes with WinX DVD's hardware acceleration. Check out the links in the description below. Now this subject is of particular interest to me because I've spent the last two decades in web development. And along with my pal Pete, I own a reasonably large web development studio. Of course, these days I don't get to do much actual development work. Instead I seem to spend my life looking at Excel spreadsheets, taking meetings and recording videos for you guys on YouTube. So I guess I'm not the best person to test this laptop's suitability for web development. What we need is a web developer with a suitably geeky disposition who's happy to make a video of his findings. Unfortunately, I have just the chat. Let me pass this laptop over to Jordan. Thanks, Dave. With the increased power and efficiency available to us on the M1 Max, it's easy to see the impact that they can have on a development workflow. Developers have to tackle resource-intensive tasks on a daily basis. As we step into the M1 era, we do well to ask ourselves some questions though. Are these machines ready to impart such an impact? Should you be trading in your daily driver in order to reap the benefits in your development workflow? Not just yet. As Pete, Dave and others have shown us, these are impressive machines. When using commonplace apps such as Chrome and Safari, two browsers with native M1 support, that becomes very apparent. The increased benefits of speed and battery usage are very welcome, especially for web developers, allowing you to work for longer on a single charge, which is always welcome. Development tools that are optimized for the M1 chipset are also very impressive and work very nicely, whether that be graphical or command line based. Table Plus, a database management tool that I use daily, impressed me very much, as did website build tools such as Yarn. Both completed tasks very quickly, much quicker than I had experienced on an Intel Mac. It starts to give us an insight into what life would be like when all apps are optimized for the M1 natively. And I have good news. It's a much snappier and smoother workflow, as is to be expected. That's the thing though, not all apps are optimized for the M1 Mac, and some, well, they just plain don't work. There were some major apps that were affected by this factor. Docker, a containerized virtualization program, well, that just doesn't work even on Rosetta. Online, there are tutorials showing you how you can get it to work, but they have you jumping through all sorts of hoops to have even a similar experience to what you would have on an Intel Mac. Homebrew an app that I use on a regular basis to manage apps and packages from the command line and a particular favorite for many developers because it doesn't natively support the ARM architecture rather than being a single command installation as it used to be, there are now multiple ways that you have to try in order to do so. I tried three ways before I found one that worked for me and it was a very temporary solution. I could go on to tell you how Android Studio has no emulator support, how PHP Storm continues to be resource intensive and I receive low memory warnings when indexing some of our larger sites. There are a raft of problems with a raft of apps. It all goes to reinforce one thing that we've already been told by Apple. We're at the beginning of a transition stage, one which Apple perhaps optimistically feels will take two years. Developers are working hard to bring their apps up to speed to work on the M1 Max. Across the internet, there are social media posts and blog posts of developers showing solutions to the problems that we have raised. While I was very happy to be able to test out this M1 Mac and very excited to say the least, I refrained from using it in my daily workflow. I knew that many time critical projects that I was working on would be negatively affected by the time that I would have to put in to fix problems that I didn't know about yet. For now, patience is the key. 
which is somewhat ironic, seeing as developers are usually chomping at the bit to be able to use the latest and greatest technologies. One thing is for sure though, as Apple continues to bring out iterations of its Apple Silicon, getting better each and every time, match with the fact that developers will work hard to make their apps work on the ARM architecture, it will be interesting to see what developers do with the new performance and speed and efficiency that is now available to them. I will be keeping a keen eye on developments, awaiting the time when these become viable development options. Back to you, Dave. Thanks, Jordan. So if you're developing using a similar stack to us and you need to use these tools, it looks like the M1 Macs aren't really ready yet. But it's still early days for Apple Silicon. And remember, Apple's only really targeted the entry-level consumer at this point. I'm sure that support for web development workflows will come, and we probably won't have too long to wait. One of the main difficulties, as we saw, is the virtualization tools. Things like Docker are pretty essential for modern web development workflows. Well, thanks again to Jordan for testing this. Um, he's also recently started his own YouTube channel where he tries new things. It's called Let's Have a Go, and the content is very enjoyable. So please take a look and consider helping him grow with a like, share, or subscribe. I might even have a go at knitting myself. And that's all for this video. I hope it was useful to you and we did enough to earn a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you want to make Jordan cry. And of course, a subscription is always appreciated. In any case, see you next time for some more geekery.